Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Wise Guys Entertainment. This is your host, Wyman. We are representing Comics Gate. This is t shirt from She from the Two Cheese, Billy and Deborah. Uh, today we are. Today we are opening a package. Uh, I wonder if it's that. Not exactly sure, but let's see. The package says Antagonist Club. And I don't recognize the artwork. <laughs> so maybe it was one of those one-off things that I, on the spur of the moment, decided to back. The uh, project I thought it might have been at first, I don't think has uh, uh, gotten to the fulfillment stage yet. I think they had some delays. So it'll be interesting discovering which project this was. Because again, I don't recognize the artwork. Uh, let me see. Oh, jeez. All right. Oh, wow. All right. Cool deal. Cool mode D. All right. So, make sure there aren't any other kitties in there. Whoops. All right. So, to give you a clue... 656 Comics. All right. Yep. Yeah, I see what it is now. I see what it is. Got five times someone call mine. Now my mama said, can't hurry, love. No, you just have to wait. Say, love, don't come easy. It's a game of give and take. Long must I wait? How much more can I do? Trust in your time. No, that heart might break. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if... You have if you've uh, if you haven't, be sure and check out all my other PO box opening uh, videos because I was telling the story of how I was one among uh, several collaborators with John Dillard for the Boomerang box, and I made a, uh, as my contribution since I was mostly just a YouTuber and Commonscape in the project promoter. Um, I didn't have any books that I'd created myself to offer. So I decided to make a bunch of training cards. And uh, so I, I made 27 sketch cards. And what I do is, you know, each set of nine if you were to oh uh, this box has had a slot for assembling the box and there was a, a piece of cardboard still kind of partially in there and it felt like a like a box i'm sorry i was looking at a notification it, it felt like uh like it had some glue on it that's what I was feeling for. All right. So, wow, that's a hefty box. Anyway, uh, so if you put the nine trading cards of uh, uh, 
what I was doing for like comic skate personalities. I think I was doing uh, comic, uh, popular comic skate creators. On the back side, if you put all nine cards together, it formed a bigger image, kind of like a puzzle. And one of the uh, uh, for that uh, puzzle, the theme was uh, comic skate fulfills, they keep their promises. And the image was, you know, popular events that stood out, like uh, Piper uh, for the Peregrine Project shaved off her hair. Um, 656 Comics, they dressed as the. Uh, uh, Kool-Aid Man and Busted Through a Wall, Shane Davis, uh, 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 well, Yan Zee Lin uh, made a sandwich for Shane Davis, and he also, uh, Shane also dressed as a sumo wrestler. Uh, EVS ate a T-bone steak, a giant one. Uh, I, no, it was a not a T-bone, but a tomahawk steak. Uh, John Malin put on fake eyebrows. Uh, Fraga Boom, Dan Fraga, uh, wore a bunny suit during a lengthy part of his campaign for Black Flag. And uh, Michael Bancroft, the bogan himself, wore kind of a floofy, poofy, blousey uh, shirt that had a lot of ruffles. Uh, so again, a uh, member of 656 Comics, uh, the name escapes me who specifically did it, but he dressed as a Kool-Aid man, smashed through a wall. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's still on their channel. So you got 656, Look at this beefy box. To give you some more reference, uh, it's about the height of half my hand, fingers extended. Then on this side is the cryptid molds. So let's open this bad boy up. Ooh, all right, so here's what it looks like as you open it. Okay, so it looks like, is it a bag? Hold up. Oh. All right, I forget how this works. It, it's, I don't remember if it's intended to be like, hold on. All right. So I'm pretty sure they just, uh, put this on the back to give something for the embroidery to grab a hold of, give it some uh, weight. Because if you did it on this thinner material itself, which kind of feels like a napkin, a dinner napkin, then I think embroidering on it alone would make it all tighten up and scrunch up. Like when you try to repair the holes in your blue jeans, or at least when I do it, it looks crazy bad. Um, all right. I honestly forget what you're supposed to do with this. If this is supposed to go on your head, like a, a hood, a do-rag, or something like that. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure that it's not supposed to be a dinner napkin. And it's too big and flexible to be a, 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 a mouse pad. I'm going to have to look at the campaign because I don't remember what this is for. Um, I guess it could also be just a kind of like something to hang on your wall. All right, so I'm going to go like so. I'm going to sing it. Let the moon and the June and the spring. Let's sing it. Let the sky of blue or T42. Um, and I'm going to fold it nice and neat like that. Like so. Uh, 
All right. At first, I thought it was a T-shirt. Now, let me set these guys aside. And let's focus on the books, I think. Whoa. All right. So, oh, man. I got to just say what to do with the box. Um, so many comic skaters are now releasing their own customized boxes. There's minimal, minor damage, like kind of like denting, I guess, is how I might describe it. You can see some of it in the reflection. Not all that big a deal because it protected the contents inside. <clears throat> and that's the uh, most important, right? So let's see. I just like to kind of uh, do commentary on, you know, how things arrive as part of the the unboxings, so that you know creators can go, hmm, I wonder if there's a better way to approach this or that, or hey, that thing arrived in great condition. I'm on the right track. And I don't need to make any other changes. Um, oops, come on. Of course, you want to be careful not to damage anything or cut, make some abrupt cut. Okay, so. Oh, man. Uh, I started... Uh, let me see. I started putting some of the custom comic skate boxes on the top most shelf and the one just, I mean, on the very top of the bookshelf, as well as this first, whoa, this first uh, shelf. But I don't know if that's going to be such a hot idea because I'm going to need all that room for comics. So I'm trying to figure out what to do. I have not come to a decision as of it yet. I might make a separate place maybe in my closet. Because I don't really have a whole lot of display sp space. Um, all right, so what do we have here? So we've got a book here. Man Dog Unleashed. I got a lot of books. Man Dog Unleashed. So is one of them a variant cover or? See, the problem with this is. Oh, wow. This is actually a Preston Acevedo cover. This one right here. Um. Who did this one? Oliveres, all right. Yeah, that's a good one too. This was the Oliveres cover. Um, problem I have with this design, I guess, is that it doesn't tell you what issue number it is. So you have to open the book to find out the issue number and like if you're trying to organize your bookshelf you can't do so quickly because you have to pull it out of the the package first out of your bag and board creature app creature apocryphal 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 Apocryphal, creature apocryphal. I think that's how you pronounce it. Apocryphal. Leave a, a comment down below if I mispronounced it. All right, that might be Ashkins and Chachki. So let's set that aside. And then the main event. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. The cryptid knows, hey, Paula. That's the main event. That's the main book. Mm. 
this I think is um, the variant cover. This has the Mothman, I think is what is what it's called. And look how thick this sucker is. Nice. Now, which one is this? Yeah, I guess it's another uh, variant cover. Maybe it's probably maybe just me, but I like that it has the six five six comics logo. I like that it has the name of it, the Cryptid Nulls, and it says six five six comics. Uh, but what I'd like to see is, uh, like somewhere, maybe book one, volume one, issue one, uh, you know, just to have, oh, you know what? Hold on. Now I'm trying to remember, is Cryptidnol supposed to be an ongoing series or is it a one-off? You know, set one, uh, set and done. And then you move on to the next project that's not cryptid nulls related. That might be that might be the reason behind it. But if they do turn it into a series, I would recommend it be numbered because I don't know any clear way to keep up a series and have them be distinguishable from one another. Like, how do you tell issue one from issue two, for example, if you don't start the very first book with a number? That's something I have to look into, uh, refresh my memory on, because I don't recall if it was supposed to be an ongoing series or not. I've interviewed a bunch of people, and it's hard for me to remember details of every interview. So let's see what this thing is. It's a little square. As I recall, it, there were all kinds of cool, fancy, unique things to this campaign. Uh, let's put that there. Wow, this is oh freaking a eh? the cryptid knows monster moments. So this is a freaking fancy. This is like uh oh man, I was gonna call it copper, like a copper almost metallic finish, but maybe it's a closer to a bronze. It feels kind of like cardboard. And then this feels like raised um, flock, flocking. And then it's got a little uh, insert, like uh, you take that out. Let's see what's inside. Open it up. Open the flaps. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. Oh, my gosh. This was one of the unique things about this campaign. They simulated, oh man, how cool is this? Uh, they simulated Polaroids. Uh, what is that? Two, two, T-U-E, Mendos? Or Twi, Twi Mendos? Two? I think it's T-U-E though. That's a trip. Oh, this is awesome. And what cool presentation is that? Uh, Kyo Chithulu? Hold up. Oh, yeah, all right, yeah. It's a hooded figure, side view, looking down at either a sheet of paper or almost like a tablet, <laughs> like a tablet PC. Uh, it's an iPad, but you know, he, he's got red eyes and he's got the tentacles in the mouth area.
Uh, L, I think it's pronounced Yango. Let's see, Pinata. Yeah, yeah. L, Yam, Nyango. Nyango. Sorry for butchering the Spanish. Uh, I'm slowly trying to learn Spanish. I'm mainly trying to brush up on my French because I studied more of it. Uh, but I'm also exploring Spanish. Ultimately, I also want to learn Japanese and Chinese. I might start with Cantonese, but I don't know. Uh, the the rake, I guess, or the rake, the rake. Uh, this is spring he helio check. I got to hand it to six five six comments. They're they're killing it. This is impressive. B E K's. It kind of looks like a. a a demon version of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. B-E-K's. That would be funny if one of these was like, was like a surprise one where it starts off milky white and then the instructions say you have to, uh, you have to shake it and blow on it. Shake it some more. And then the image slowly appears, and it's a, like a mystery, uh, like a bonus mystery card. Like a, I don't know if you could pull off something like that, though. Oh, here's that uh, La Il, La, who is it? La Rona, La Lerona, or La Lorna? La, la, la no, La. La Lilarona. Wow, this almost looks like uh, the art style kind of looks like anime or manga. Um, so as far as I remember, uh, La Lilarona, Yarona, um, she, oh man, I think she killed her own daughter and then now she's uh, got heavy guilt on her. So she haunts the, the, uh, the roads in search of her thinking she's still alive or something like that. Ah, this one's called The Killer. Here's Johnny. Very cool. Um, the Goat Man. Do the Goat Man. Do the Goat Man. Well, here's a dance move that you can't deny. Night Gaunt, which kind of looks like the devil or uh, or a demon. And then we've got one called uh, Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl. It's like a one-eyed serpent that flies in the sky. And then smile dog. <laughs> bad dogs, bad dogs. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad dogs, bad dogs. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad dogs is filmed in front of a studio audience. All right. Wow, that's pretty neat. All right, that's quite impressive how they uh, dis uh, displayed this. This is a this is a trip. 
It almost looked like it was going to be a, a drink coaster because of the shape. But, man, this is nice. That That's impressive. I mean, they could have gone, like, cheap-ass and simply, um, simply, like, stuck it in a Ziploc bag or something. But, no, they went above and beyond. All right, let's see what this is. Oh, all right. It's a button or pin or what they'll call in the UK a badge. Wait a minute, where's the where's the top? Oh there it is. Yeah, this was smart. See, I always recommend you put anything that has some kind of pokey back. Anything that has a pokey back, I recommend you protect it somehow from the other items in the box. Otherwise, you risk denting the surface of the cover of a book degrading its value, especially in it for the collector's aspect. Yeah, this is the Cryptid Knowles logo. It's got some silvery parts to it. Back of the skull, the eyes, nose. Pretty neat. So that's going in the pins pile. I don't think I'm going to reuse that, but I'll throw it over there with the other stuff later and then let's see don't remember what this is either so I, I better be extra careful because part of it looks like it's oh, hold on. okay mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so uh, Cryptidinals Monster Moments. <laughs> uh, there's that smile, dog. Side A, Raydron, La Irona, the man dog, the goatman, kid, Chathudu, Keza, Koto. Bigfoot bonus track. Side B, Smile Dog, The Rake, Black Eyed Kids, The Killers, Night Gaunt, uh, Nyango, Azato bonus track. Performed by Ray Ramos, recorded by George Padilla. I can't remember if they're actual like stories that are recorded onto a cassette. Or if the, you know what? Uh, should I open it? It does sound like a cassette tape. So I don't know if they're actually music tracks or or ah uh, shoot. I was tempted to leave it in the package, but let's open it just to confirm it is a cassette tape because I think it is. It looks like it is. Okay. All right. So we're opening it. Yeah. Looks like a tape. Now the question is, is it music or it says monster moment. So I, I'm wondering if they like created uh, theme music to go with every cryptid mill or if it's like uh, a series of like audio stories where they talk about each of them man this brings me back 
cassette tapes. I used to go to flea markets all the time with family. And during that time, you, you'd be browsing around and everyone had cassette tapes and LP records. And around that time, Michael Jackson was popular. Prince was. Uh, Cindy Lauper. Um, Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, Run DMC. Lionel Richie. Boy George. Okay. It, I got it on a little messy, but I mostly got it on the sleeve back on. So whenever I pull my tape deck out again, I have to listen to this. Okay, so this is among the unique, super unique things from projects. That goes in that pile. Um, and then I have a few more. Th All right, so this is also super unique, the uh, Polaroids. So that's going to go over here in the super unique uh, let me momentarily move all the books to the book pile. I've actually got three book piles going. I don't want to stack them too high, otherwise they'll be sliding down. Oh, and also this thing that I can't remember what it's supposed to be. And I don't think it's a napkin to be used as a bib either while you're eating. So unique stuff. And then last but not least, we have this little bag and board with some extra goodies. So let's see what we got here. Uh, I might end up reusing the board for a couple of these. We'll see. So this has monster moments. Ah. Oh my gosh. Wow. All right. And there's even a, a thing to listen. Uh, there's a, a QR code. Very clever. Words by Ray Ramos. Art by Dario Rodriguez and Red Garcia. Cover designed by Oliver Lee Arce. Uh, Monster Moments. First printing. Published by 656 Comics. How cool is that? Man, they put a lot of effort into this. Bravo. Excuse me. And then we've got, oh, all right. I don't know how I feel about double-sided prints because they're not like eight and a half by 11. So if you put them in a full sleeve, plastic sleeve and put it in your binder, you won't be able to see both sides at once. Well, I mean, you will, but you're going to waste a lot of space because I don't think they make sleeves for this size of uh, print. I mean, it'll fit, but there'll be a lot of unused space, so it'll look funny. Um, and then this is the other two-sided one. <laughs> Pretty cool. And then um, we've got Creature Apocryphal is the way I'm pronouncing it. Creature Apocryphal. I apologize if I'm butchering everything. It looks like uh, possible concept art or just, you know, um, sketches, you know, Revealing part of the creation process. So this, I think I'm going to put back on the board. But the prints, I'll put with the other print.
prints in the print pile. And then the uh, uh, I guess the monster moments I'll put on the back side of this one. So it's easy to see that there's two different things going on. Okay. Uh, book pile. And print pile. Prints are are the what? Oh, they're over here. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, those are like postcards. Okay. All right. Awesome. 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 So that concludes the PO box opening of Cryptid Mills from 656 Comics. Thank you guys for the awesome work. Really cool looking project and uh, looking forward to digging into it. Um, I'll take a swig of water after I end this video. Thanks for uh, all your support. Appreciate your checking out my video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Share these videos all over the place, over your social medias. And thanks for joining. We'll see.